Hey, what's up? This is Chosen and going to be joined by Nubs here on the channel for the first time. And we are going to be talking about Duchess versus Pythion and also the fusions tier list and where Nubs agrees and disagrees. And now that we have some more perspective on Pythion, where he may rank in the overall picture and all of that. So let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, Nubs? How you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. It's great to be on the channel. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have you, man. I've, I've, I've wanted to get you uh, get you on the channel for a while now. And, uh, you know, I know with, like, time zones and stuff, we've been trying yeah. to line it up. And, and here we are. We finally, <laughs> finally are able to meet up. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's my first time collaborating with you. Uh, and for any of my viewers that, that don't know you yet, can you uh, kind of give me just a quick rundown of your, like, gaming history and content history and what got you into Raid and, and some of that stuff? <laughs> Sure, sure. Well, I mean, I can tell you when I first got into gaming, uh, I got really sick when I was about seven years old, and my cousins lent me this device called a Nintendo 64 with Mario Kart 64 on it. And I remember just playing that, and it was great. Uh, and yeah, that was that was pretty much where I got hooked <laughs> at that point, and I was a Nintendo kid. Uh, but yeah, I mean, recently I've been playing uh, lots of World of Warcraft stuff. I started on YouTube doing kind of random stuff, then fell into Heroes of the Storm. I did that for a good while until Blizzard murdered that brutally. Um, <laughs> did some World of Warcraft stuff. I did a bit of Final Fantasy XIV, and and I guess it was just over a year ago, I guess now, uh, wandered over into Raid, uh, thanks to actually doing a, an ad for Raid while I was doing World of Warcraft stuff, believe it or not. And yeah, kind of fell in love with the game after playing it for a while, and here we are now. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've been here since the very beginning, and I've heard that story, you know, a lot of times. It's like, yeah. you know, I did I did a raid sponsorship, and then I was like, well, you know, damn, I mean, this game isn't that bad. I might, I might actually play it a little <laughs> bit here. So, uh, yeah, I've heard that before. That's really cool, man. Thanks for thanks for sharing. So, I guess to uh, to, to kick this off, uh, you know, what's your what's your overall sentiment on uh, Python? And I know he's got kind of a similar mm. kit to Duchess. Uh, so, you know, do you think uh, we we over hyped him we under hyped him do, do you think we we were about right How, what's your overall sentiment of pythion so far oh it's interesting i think overall sentiment is he is certainly extremely good um i still don't know actually for sure in terms of the overhype or not like because he was definitely hyped up as like potentially the best fusion of all time i don't know if that's true because i mean there's other fusions which are just completely game-changing helicath a fairly recent one uh, from last year i think that was really stands out as opening up, you know, clan boss in a way that transforms an account in a very impactful way, getting you those shards and those books much earlier than possible uh, otherwise, uh, and so on. So I don't know if Pythion is a, as good as that, but he is, he's definitely very strong. <laughs> Yep, I, I I agree with all that, and and obviously it always depends on you know where everybody's account sits, where and what's going to yeah. impact them specifically. Uh, but I think in terms of general utility, just overall, you know, he's definitely up there, uh, top three, top five, uh, you know, in in terms of mm. being like widespread usage on your account. But when we start to yeah. compare them, if you pull up the you know that on your end. It's actually sure. pretty surprising. I, I, like I went through, and you can kind of let me know. Uh, you know, I made this for my channel, um, and, and I put like little check marks on where I kind of thought uh, they were better. It looked like to me the the base stats were mostly a wash. They're actually super mm. similar on on the base stats. Um, and then you know the A one. I guess you know. Do you agree with me there that uh, yeah. you know Duchess? You know, getting the shield is super impactful. Uh, they both have a multi hitter. It's a targeted shield. Is a little bit better than than kind of like that that low uh, heal. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think the shield is much better. Um, even just from the small things like in arena, the shield helps keep Duchess herself alive as well. That does. It's small, but it adds up. Um, and I think for something like Hydra, especially high end Hydra, where you're kind of potentially running both types of champions with something like a Krisk, um, that shield going on to Krisk is an extra buff for Mischief to help target Krisk. So it helps him Mischief tanking at the same time while also keeping him alive. Python doesn't have that. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely give it to Duchess overall on that one. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then for the A2, I actually gave the check mark over to Python on this one. Um, mm. I, I think. 
I think an ability with a full cleanse uh, and block debuffs for multiple turns is just insane to have stacked in one ability. I will say that Duchess bringing the increased attack is going to make her so much better pairing with a Candrophon, a Baron, uh, you know, somebody yeah. in the arena that you don't have to bring an attack up on top of that. Um, but I'm going to give the slight edge on the A2 to uh, just overall in the whole scheme of the game to Pytheon there. Do you agree or disagree? It's really interesting, isn't it? I think this is the biggest point of divergence in their kits. Um, I, I lean more towards Duchess on this one. Uh, the thing that puts me off the Duchess one is the four-turn cooldown. It's a long cooldown on that move. But the thing that I like about it, uh, like you said, in terms of some of those specific teams, you've obviously got the Veil enabling, like you said, Candrophon in the arena. It also can be very disruptive in the arena, just generally. Uh, and specifically for Hydra, it's a huge deal, right? That was something I, I tried with Pytheon, was that because he doesn't bring Veil vale himself, you, you really, the cleanse isn't enough to deal with the fears that come out from Head of Torment. You kind of need to bring in Inquisitor Shamail or, or someone else bring in a Veil. Vale. Uh, whereas Duchess could go in in the same spot and you could just throw in like Duchess, Chris, maybe an Ugo and, and three damage dealers and, and she's got it all covered. Uh, and then you also got, I think, a consideration of, of let's say, in Doom Tower, you've got the Seer teams, uh, where because Duchess is bringing those three buffs uh, with that move, and you've got Kaimars to reset, it gives you the three buffs to Seer, and then she's still bringing the Revive and the Speed Aura, etc. So I, I do give the edge to Duchess here, but I can see why the shorter cooldown with the cleanse as well. That's like a, an insanely good move, too. Um it, it's a tough one. I think this is the toughest part to, to try to distinguish between yeah, them. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> for me, that was the tiebreaker was the cooldown. Um, I think mm. if the cooldowns were the same, I I'm taking Duchess. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, the, the three versus four is a pretty big deal. But you're not wrong. Like everything you said is is accurate, and and I'm on board. It, it is very very close on that one. Uh, then for the A three, uh, you know, I, again, I think I called this one a wash. It looks like I, I didn't even put a check mark. Um, because they're both. <laughs> They're both the same cooldown. They both book two, four, and they both revive, and then they kind of both get an ancillary effect after the revive. So it's like, you know, <laughs> it's all it's all situational on which one would be right there. Yeah, they're very similar. I I, I maybe say the Duchess one is slightly better, but it's it's very similar, really. Yeah, like they're both very strong revives. You can't really go wrong with a four turn team revive that's giving you something to significant uh, to stay alive as well. Yep, and then and then the passive, uh, you know, we're starting to see why a lot of people compare them and why they're so similar. Is like as you mm. go down the board, they've got a lot in common. They both have like kind of a, a damage mitigation passive for the whole team. Now I gave the check mark to Duchess because there is no qualifier. Like you know, for Pytheon, he has to get a turn off, or people on his on on his uh, team have to place some buffs. Uh, so if people get CC, now all of a sudden that passive is worthless, and you just get blown up. Whereas Duchess, it's just there from the start of the fight, and there is no qualifier. Yeah, I I totally agree. Yeah, for sure. It just it just goes. It just works. I, I am definitely curious. I'll say to see the Pytheon one. Uh, like once people get their hands on Pytheon, start building teams, I'd be, definitely be interested, especially for things where it's difficult in Arena, uh, for sure, to have it on. But like when you go up against bosses like Doom Tower, Hydra, future clan bosses, I'd definitely be interested to see what people can do with Pytheon, where you can ensure the buffs are up. And it's just a very consistent 25% damage reduction. Like that could be really cool. Uh, but like you said, I, I definitely lean more towards Duchess just because it works. And it's almost impossible to stop it working, um, especially in Arena. I think that's huge. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Okay. And then lastly, the uh, the Aura. Um, I guess I gave the checkmark to Duchess because you just can't go wrong with an all-battle speed Aura. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, do you, do you see a situation? Do you think, like, uh, Pytheon would get used in, like, you know, certain Doom Tower boss fights or, or something like that? Yeah, I mean, definitely possible. It's definitely possible. I, I agree that the Duchess one is a, probably a bit more useful overall, like in terms of building that Seer team I was talking about for Doom Tower hard waves. Um, the Speed Aura is just more useful because you should never be actually getting hit by the enemy, really. Uh, for Hydra as well, I do find the Speed Aura is generally a bit more useful because it's kind of harder to build up the speeds. Uh, whereas you're not necessarily building resistance on everybody, maybe just a couple of champions, but everybody wants more speed. Um, so I, I do think the speed aura is more generally useful. But again, 
something where you could come in with a let's say a hydra team and you could oh okay let's rebuild this team specifically planning to have that python aura in there and then maybe you could do something with it um but there's some limitations like if you want to run inquisitor shamel he's going to start turn tur uh, turn meter boosting python which isn't very useful really in that sort of team uh whereas yeah duchess is nearly always a shoe in for the the speed aura slot there so all right, well, you heard it here first. I think Nubs is straight <laughs> down the board on, uh, yeah, I think on so, Duchess. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it goes to show how how strong Duchess is as just a general champion. Um, but in, in, like, the grand scheme of raid, um, you know, obviously everyone consensus Duchess is, like, a top three, top five champion. Is Pytheon 100%. also in that conversation? Or is Pytheon a little bit down, like, in the top 10, top 15 range? Yeah, my, my feeling right now is that he is a bit down, but he's still, like you said, I mean, it's top 10, top 15. If he's in that range, that's still incredibly good uh, when you consider, especially seeing this is a champion that, I mean, realistically, probably someone who's just been playing the game for three or four months, even reasonably casually, can potentially come in and get for sure on their account. Like, that's insane. I might have a bit of the grass is greener effect coming in here because I don't have a Duchess, you know? um so oh, you always now it makes sense we got yeah, the envy yeah. ratings okay yeah. yeah see okay when you don't have a champion you just you only see the good things about them seeing uh <laughs> you know that that's the one thing that i've gotten insanely lucky on raid is i have three duchess um mm -hmm. and, you know uh like but i don't i don't have like any of the top tier void legos like do you i don't have i don't have hegemon or Siffy or yumiko or akrigia or necrit like ursiga i don't have any of these pvp like void legos so what's your yeah. kind of luck ben like voids versus non-voids uh not great overall so i've got a chris because my best void legendary which i pulled last year actually that was a really hype video to record that one that was insane complete game changer um and then the next best void like i've got is probably baron who was terrible when i pulled him it was like baron sucks and then it was one of those weird things where you know that hype of pulling an oh like if you pulled a Chrysia, how much you'd freak out it was kind of like ah oh, i have to just rediscover that hype retroactively now that he's been buffed it's like it's not quite the same uh but probably baron oh wow um, okay okay cool so you're I in a similar know. boat to me then i i, I did similar, pull a Crisk. Yeah. i did pull chris ah, yes yeah there we go but chris has been <laughs> uh has been power crept a little bit i don't see him as much in the arena um obviously arena yeah no obviously yeah, he's still god tier pve but i don't see him as mm -hmm. much in the arena but i do uh want to transition to getting your thoughts i've got the the fusion tier list pulled up now um yep. so i currently so uh, just kind of overall, I switched this from a tier list to a straight rankings. It's just one to 43 um, because mm. because the fusions aren't the game as a whole, because, you know, technically all the fusions could be S tier or F tier, like technically, like in the whole scheme of the game, because it's like a separate mm -hmm. thing. So I'm yeah. just literally rating them one to 43 and then moving them around. Um, so I've currently got Pytheon sitting at third. Um, is there anything that jumps off for you in terms of like a big disagreement or would you, if you were doing it, would you slide him down or up or anything? Uh, no, I mean, I, I feel like that feels pretty accurate for Pytheon. Yeah. I, maybe I, maybe I put him above Brogni. That's hard to say, isn't it? So used to using Brogni. Yeah. I, I do feel like the Helicath number one to me feels kind of right. I probably put Pytheon maybe number two. Um, it's one of these ones, it's always hard to do these lists, right? Because it can really vary depending on what you need for your account. It can be such a huge difference maker. I um, think maybe... I agree with you. I think mm -hmm. I would lean towards, so like when I first initially did this, you know, it was kind of like, you know, two weeks ago or whatever. And I was like, I don't want to like put someone one or two without like being able to test him on the test server yeah. and, and get more input from creators. And uh, cause I don't want to like, Oh my God, he's the best ever. He's number one <laughs> before I can even, you know, get some input. So I, I put him at number three, but I think I agree with moving him up to number two. How's the rest of the top row look while I got you here? Uh, I, th I think the one that probably stands out to me is mother Cybell. I'm a huge apologist for mother Cybell. I love her. Uh, but I don't know if I put her that high up. Um, I feel like she's she mostly for me is mostly a Hydra champion and she's great for that. But uh, I would for me personally, I wouldn't put her quite as high as that. I don't think. What what was the, the reasoning for putting her up so high for you? She's 
she's just aging uh, really well. I see her in more and more compositions, more and more, you know, uh, like in silver and gold, like tag team arena defenses and people getting more utility out of her uh, in different PVE content and, uh, and, and faction wars. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm not married to that thought. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I can, I can understand your argument of, uh, placing her down uh so okay i appreciate that input yeah it's interesting i i always have such a hydra bias as well you know like i'm like oh sigmund ooh, shamrock they're my boys i love <laughs> them because they're so good for hydra yeah, and they're yeah. underrated as heck as well uh but it's it's so tough you know when you're trying to rate everything like as an overall thing and and it does vary so much i i, I feel like generally speaking well yeah i th i think overall for the most part definitely uh, agree with uh, the tier list overall. Yeah, looks pretty solid. Cool. Yeah. Mother okay. Cybele so stands out. That's that'd be the only one. Um, cool. But yeah. Awesome. Well, I well, you know <laughs> I I appreciate it, and that kind of covers the discussion I wanted to have in terms of Pythion yeah. and where he ranks and versus Duchess <laughs> and the comparison. But uh, if there's anything else you wanted to chat about or mention before we before we take yeah. off, I think we're heading over to your channel to record a video. But yeah, if there's anything we, else we you want to chat about, I'm happy to to discuss. No. I hope the video is it's long enough, right? I mean, I can argue if we want. We can fight <laughs> no, about all good. of them. <laughs> I keep it. I keep it pretty casual around here, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't have like a script or like a. We gotta go for twenty minutes or you know, yeah. So it's it's all good if we if we got the job done and we got the discussion done. I'm good. Mm, yeah. No. Uh, I I think we're good, dude. I, I think right. that's the, cool. I'm looking forward to to having a debate over on my channel as uh -oh. well let's see uh -oh. let's get i'm let's under get, attack you're gonna get vicious you're gonna get brutal <laughs> <laughs> all right we're well, gonna be taken <laughs> i will i will link to nubs's stuff down below definitely uh go throw him a sub and check him out he's uh he's cranking out good content over there and it's it's great to finally meet you and and be able to touch base with you and i appreciate you taking the time to uh to chat with me yeah, one hundred percent. It was great to great to sync up despite the time zone differences and to record this and chat. Yeah, it's been awesome. All cool. Right. Thanks, man. Have a good one.